Good morning all. My name is Dr. Remya Radhakrishnan and I'm a faculty of pharmaceutical sciences. Today I'm here to present a lecture on urinary system. So we'll be covering on the topics like what are the primary organs of a urinary system, what are the accessory organs of a urinary system. Okay. So first of all, a figure that comes to our mind or a diagram that comes to our mind when thinking about urinary system is just a simple diagram as such. Okay, so first of all, this will be a kidney, a kidneys, that is we have a pair of kidneys which are bean shaped. Then it is connected by a ureter and uh, which will be joined to a urinary bladder. And finally, we'll have a sphincter, that is urethral sphincters as a excretion, excretory organ which helps to remove the toxic waste from our body. So firstly, we'll uh, talk about what are the primary organs of this urinary system. The primary organ is kidney. So kidney is actually uh, the principal organ of the uh, urinary system and this urinary system is also known as excretory system excretory system or renal system then the principal function of kidney is removal of toxins from blood and filtering the filtering or purifying the blood and finally providing excretory substance like uh, uh, excretory substance that is waste uh, that will be excreted in the form of urine. All the metabolic wastes in our body will be finally excreted in the form of urine. So the principal function of kidney is removal of toxins. So first of all its function is removal of toxins. All the metabolic wastes will be excreted with the help of kidney. The second function is it helps to regulate blood volume and blood pH and the third function is it helps to maintain the plasma concentration of electrolytes. Um, so what are the electrolytes, common electrolytes present in our body? Mainly sodium, potassium and chloride. So kidney has a role of maintaining all these electrolytes in our body. Like if we are having hyponatremia or hypernatremia or else hypokalemia or hyperkalemia or if hypochloremia or hyperchloremia, kidney will maintain it according to our body's need. So regulate the plasma concentration of electrolytes. And final one is that it helps to stabilize the blood pH. So these are the main functions of kidney removal of toxins, regulate blood volume and blood pH, regulate the plasma concentration of electrolytes. Now coming to the location of kidney. Kidney is actually located between the peritoneum and posterior wall of abdomen. That is between peritoneum and posterior wall of abdomen. And this is the reason why kidney is also called as a retroperitoneal organ. So when coming to the vertical location of kidney, it is actually located between the thoracic and third lumbar vertebrae. It's actually partially protected by 11th and 12th pair of ribs as well. This is the reason why when a person is having a RTA, that is road traffic accident, the physician tells like that there's a chance of the patient to have a kidney damage. If there is any fracture to this 12th and 11th pair of ribs, the chance of kidney to get damaged will be increased. Okay, so this was all about the primary organ, kidney, its functions and its location. Now we'll move to the accessory organs. So what are the accessory organs of urinary system? It is urethra, urinary bladder and ureter. So first coming to ureter, so the function, is, function of ureter is like uh, the urine that has been produced in the kidney will be transported via ureter to the urinary bladder. So, okay. And then this ureter has three layers. First, the outer layer is called as adventitia. Adventitia. The middle layer is called as muscularis. And the innermost layer is called as mucosa. 
okay and this cavity that is left out the cavity that is left out is called as lumen and with the help of gravity and peristaltic contra contractions the urine transfers is uh, transported from kidney to the urinary bladder so this is the function of ureter that is transportation of the uh, so formed urine from kidney to urinary bladder okay so it has three layers that is muscularis adventitia and mucosa next urinary bladder so urinary bladder is actually a hollow cavity where the urine is collected and stored for a specific period of time okay and this is also completely you know muscular it's completely muscular just because a, a cyclic contraction and relaxation is required for the process of micturition so urinary uh, urinary bladder is muscular in nature and it also has three layers the first one is the same as in ureter like adventitia adventitia muscularis and mucosa and this muscularis is made of detrusor muscles the muscularis the, the muscularis present here is actually detrusor muscles which helps in contraction detrusor muscles that helps in contraction so this is the oral structure of urinary bladder now there is a triangle shaped structure inside this urinary bladder which has two urethral orifices orifices are actually openings so there are two urethral openings uh, and this is called as trigon and when coming to valves there are internal sphincter muscles and external sphincter muscles present which helps in the con uh, voluntary and involuntary movement of urine from bladder to urethra so the valves present in urinary bladder are internal urethral sphincters and external urethral sphincters internal and external urethral sphincters okay and this helps in voluntary and involuntary movements of for the opening and passage of urine okay so internal will regulate the voluntary movement and external will regulate the involuntary movement for the passage of urine from the uh, urine to urethra actually okay so uh, ureter and urinary bladder the anatomical fact um, anatomical structure is similar for male as well as for females but when it comes to urethra there is difference so for females this urethra is about 4 cm in length but for male it is around 20 cm in length and the muscles present are similar that both have mucosa and muscularis but for males this muscularis is again classified into prostate prostatic urethra and membranous urethra so this is the difference between the male anatomical structure of urethra and female anatomical structure of urethra and the urethra uh, urethral orifice for females is present between the clitoris and vaginal opening so this is the overall structure of like overall uh, features of our accessory organs present in urinary system so now we'll talk about the structure and layers of kidney okay so first of all these are renal arteries and renal vein okay and this renal artery what is this that what it does is that it carries all the oxygenated blood to kidney it brings up brings all those oxygenated blood from the body to kidney and the function of renal vein is that it will circulate all the filtered blood to the back to the body so this is the main function of renal artery and vein and now next these are called as renal pyramids this is the place where the urine formation or processing of urine formation takes place in our body and this uh, pyramid actually the upper part is a little bit wider and this part is called as renal base okay it's called as renal base and the lower part as it goes down or as it goes down deep it becomes a, a bit narrow a bit narrow and this portion is called as renal papilla and as it as we uh, observe there is a 
junction which joins the two adjacent pyramids and this portion is called as minor calyx minor calyx and each individual pyramid will have a minor calyx for sure and then these pyramids join together and form a junction and form a, a junction which is called as major calyx and then it further elaborate to form renal pelvis as a whole this is called as renal pelvis and there is a portion here where the arteries and veins comes in and goes out as well as the renal pelvis also protrudes out and this junction is called as hilum hilum is the junction where all the arteries and veins comes in and goes out okay now next is ureter ureter it is a, pro, a, a portion from where the form uh, the formed urine will be transferred from the kidney to the urinary bladder and then the uh, lobe of this kidney is called as renal lobe the downward portion whether it looks like a lobe is called as renal lobe and the the space between two pyramids this left out space between two pyramid is called as renal column so this is the overall structure of a kidney mainly there will be renal arteries renal veins and then the uh, primary unit uh, will be like the pyramids renal pyramids which will have a uh, upper portion that is called as renal base and the narrow portion is called as renal papilla and the two individual pyramids will be jo joined at an interjunction called as uh, minor calyx which further which further broadens to form a major calyx which further broadens again to form finally a renal pelvis okay now coming to layers of kidney actually there are five layers of uh, layers of uh, layers in kidney and these are divided as external and internal external it includes renal fascia adipose capsules and renal capsule okay this renal fascia it's an outer layer and it help it uh, it is a outer protective covering actually and this adipose capsule is a fatty layer and it helps to maintain the position of kidney adipose has a role of maintaining the position of kidney and renal capsule renal capsule is the thinnest covering of kidney the thinnest layer covered in the kidney is called as renal capsule and now coming to the internal layer internal layer actually it includes two cortex and medulla the portion are uh, represented in a dotted line like the this region is called as renal cortex region uh, ab above the pyramids which is left out and that's re that, that region is called as renal cortex and the layer surrounding the renal pyramids or renal pelvis is actually renal medulla renal medulla is the layer that surrounds the renal pelvis region so these are the overall layers of kidney and the structure of kidney so now my question is when uh, when we go to a hospital why do we consult a nephrologist or urologist like what is the difference between a nephrologist and urologist why should we consult two different people even though the the purpose is like we have to uh, our diagnose like we have some symptoms and we have to get a diagnosis of any issues related to our uh, urinary system itself so there are two physicians men for this one is a nephrologist and the other is urologist so the difference is that the nephrologist solely diagnose and deal with the issues related to kidney only only related to the primary organ only when it comes to urologist he deals with female and male urinary system and male reproductive system so this is the difference between a nephrologist and a urologist nephrologist solely deals with the issues related to kidney whereas a urologist will deal with both female and male urinary system as well as male reproductive system related issues okay so in this class now you got an idea about what uh, what is actually urinary system what is the purpose of urinary system and what is excretion what are the two kinds of 
pri organs like that or like primary organs what are they and their structure their layers involve layers and uh, then coming to accessory organs ureter urethra and urinary bladder and how they function how they are positioned and how is their structurally how they are structurally organized so this was all about the class and hope you have a nice day